Good morning everyone, today we're going to be talking about my initial impressions of the Steer region because it has been one week and so I've pretty much had a chance to try out everything that Steer has to offer at the moment. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the very first thing I want to talk about is, of course, the story. The story in Stia, I feel like, is much better than Kavaris. I really didn't like the Kavaris storyline, to be perfectly honest with you guys. I didn't care about the Power Rangers and going here and doing that and all that stuff. It just didn't feel very substantial versus the Stia region, it was a lot more clear cut. You know, you came in here, you had an objective, you had interesting characters, they all have their inner conflicts and all of that stuff. And it's just a more interesting story. You know, it's a lot more action packed. You're attacking here, you're going there. And with the help of the music, especially, it just feels like the Stia region's a lot more engaging compared to all the other areas. Another thing I really like about the Stia region is the hub area. I think it's because of the music and the way that it's placed out. It does give me a little bit of Monster Hunter vibes mainly Monster Hunter World, um, because that's the only Monster Hunter game that I've completed in total. I haven't played any of the older versions or any of the new ones. I never played Rise yet, even though a lot of people tell me that I should. But this really gives me Monster Hunter World vibes. When I came in here, the music kicks in. The more I think about it, it's probably the music which actually uh, makes me think about Monster Hunter. It just has that type of epic feel to it, which is really, really nice. Because the next thing that I wanted to point out is the music. The music in Stia is is fantastic. Whoever's in charge of the music in the NGS team, you guys are doing fantastic. Every time there's a new zone, it's always a new banger. The music is freaking amazing. I love all the music in Stia. I actually put on my headphones or my expensive IEMs just to listen to the music because that's how much I enjoy it. However, enough blabbering on about story and music. You guys are here mainly for my impressions about the gameplay. So how do I feel about the gameplay loop? I think the new gameplay loop they've introduced is a breath of fresh air because I've been doing it all the time and I haven't been defaulting to my go-to which is normally combat zones. Instead, I've been doing this new gameplay loop because they introduced it and that is of course going to Drayson Plant or the Outer Area 1 or 2 in order to just farm for these Recon Gigantics, farm for veterans, as well as fight Giga Vardy which is really really awesome. So I really enjoy this new gameplay loop because it's pretty much you just jump into a random random room, you find a bunch of people who are doing the same thing, and you just follow the crowd and you do whatever the heck you want. And whenever you want to leave, you just leave. There's no organization required. It feels very much like a combat zone. It's a super glorified combat zone, which is really cool because you're getting a lot of very valuable rewards from farming these recon gigantics as well as veterans. You're getting a bunch of Gigas capsules, you're getting Dreadkeeper 4s. There's a lot of very valuable items that a lot of people are incentivized to farm for. And I feel like this is a step in the right Right direction Sega. I want you guys to continue to do this, make it worth the player's time to farm for specific things. And with the introduction of the Coclophis weapons, which require Infernium, I really like how they implemented that into the Recon Gigantics. It's like, okay, you can farm normal Gigas through your Purple Triggers or Storms, but on top of that, there's a consistent and easy way to farm for these resources through the Recon Gigantics. And this way, it really feels like old PSO2, where even though the grind was a little bit lengthy and a little little bit boring to some extent, but you would always be able to track your progress. You'd always be able to say, okay, so I'm going to play today and I'm going to farm for like an hour or two. I'll get 10 or 20 Infernium and then I'll call it a day. Then the next day you come back and you slowly build towards that goal. And I feel like they nailed the drop rate for Infernium really, really well, where most players, if you play casually, you will get your weapon within a week. Now, if you're a hardcore player, you'll probably get your weapon in two days by farming 200 Infernium. However, I love love that they give you the option how you can farm for 200 Infernium and get your fixed attack level 3 weapon or there's a fixed attack 1 version for 30 Infernium or even easier there's just a regular version with no fixer for 15 Infernium because we already have the fixer transfer system and everyone's time schedule is different so you know some people might not be able to play in December because they're super busy with work with family with life in general so maybe you want your weapon in order to just progress and have a good time or maybe you just want to upgrade something but you can't farm 200 Infernium because you don't have the time. Well, you can just farm 15 Infernium, boom, you get your weapon, you fully upgrade it, and you can reap the benefits from that weapon until you eventually do get your 200 Infernium, and then you can transfer that fixer over. 
I really, really like this because it caters to more people. You've got the casual players, you've got the mid-core players, you've got the hardcore players. It caters to everyone, which is a good thing. And on top of all of this in the exploration zones, I really like how when the recon gigantic spawn, immediately everyone can see it on their map. It's just this gigantic purple square. And everyone just automatically knows, okay, that is the recon gigantics. So we just swarm over there and we go kill it. It's very simple, very easy to understand. So I have zero complaints about the Recon Gigantics. However, regarding Mediola Outer Area 1, there is an arena there which is really, really cool. I love the idea on how you kill the Recon Gigantics in the arena to spawn a normal Gigantics. You kill the normal Gigantics to spawn the Giga Vardy. I love that idea. The only two issues I have with this is Giga Vardy has way too much HP. It takes too long to kill Giga Vardy. For most pug groups or disorganized groups, it will take you about 12 to 15 minutes to defeat Giga Vardy. Party, which is a very, very long time. Compared to normal Gigantics, usually they take about 8 to 10 minutes and they're dead. Now, of course, if you are organized and everyone's geared and it's like a private room, for example, you could probably kill Gigavardi sub 10 minutes relatively easily. However, the thing that bothers me the most about Gigavardi is his drop rate. It doesn't drop anything different, anything valuable. I understand that Gigavardi is sort of supposed to be like, oh, the big bad boss in that little arena area where you spawn him and he's kind of like the ancient boss, very similar to what the gorge area was with the ancients. Like, I like that idea, but he needs to drop something valuable or something useful that warrants the time investment of me spending 12 to 15 minutes wailing on this boss to kill it. There needs to be some sort of incentive or some sort of resource that I can get from Giga Vardy where I can get a little bit of this every time I clear it. So eventually I can farm for all these materials and exchange it for something super rare or super valuable. Very similar to how we have the Infernium, but maybe for a better weapon series or something. Or maybe Sega's already got this planned in the pipeline and maybe they're just going to add it later down the line, maybe like during the seasonal event or when we get an expansion for the Steer region. And this carries over to my next topic about Stia. I do not think the Stia region is finished yet. I strongly believe that there is more to Stia that we will unlock later down the line, maybe beginning of next year. I don't think we're going to unlock anything from the seasonal event. Like the seasonal event is going to be its own thing. We're going to finish the seasonal event. And when that concludes, we're probably going to get part two of the Stia region as well as new story and all of that. That is my assumption. And I think that is going to be another big update. We're probably going to get a rehaul of new gear, new armors, because currently we don't have any 8-star rarity armors. I'm sure that's probably going to come in. A lot of people have been speculating 9-star rarity weapons. I know Sega said that they wouldn't release 9-star rarity weapons, but they did specify that they wouldn't release it this year upon the release of Stia. They never said anything about, oh, there won't be a 9-star weapon at all in the Stia region. So what I'm thinking is Stia will get an expansion of some sort sometime early next year, where we're going to unlock more areas. We're going to get another combat zone of some sort because you know we currently only have one combat zone which a lot of people myself included find very very strange and so I'm fully expecting there to be a lot more that Sia can offer to us. So in conclusion, I think the Stia region is amazing right now. I'm having a blast even after the quote unquote honeymoon period. I still think the Stia region is extremely fun simply because they've introduced another gameplay loop, which supports more players, which is something that I really like to see because I know a lot of streamers out there, you know, you want to play with your community, but combat zones is eight players only. But lucky for us, now we have these new exploration zones where you can hunt the Recon Gigantics as well as regular veterans with drop loot, which everyone kind of wants because they're valuable. You can sell it for a lot of Meseta, you can use it for yourself. And so a lot of people want these items and so they're willing to run the content and the content's fun in general as well. So I'm really happy that Sega's finally implementing new gameplay mechanics or new gameplay loops into the game so that we have more stuff to do. Now, something that I would love to see later down the line is, of course, some sort of life skilling. I really want some sort of life skilling where I can become a cook, for example, and increase my cooking mastery and make rappy fritters or make all these other special food buffs, which I can share with my alliance members or sell on the market for Meseta and stuff like that, because that would give me a huge incentive to go around the open world to gather materials and all of that stuff, because now it all has value by collecting all this meat, by collecting all these crabs and scallops and all these different materials 
materials, I can make money off it. And so a lot of people are going to go out of their way and they're going to say, yo, this is my end game. This is what I enjoy doing. And I'm just going to keep running this because it makes me a lot of money so that I can afford all of my fashion pieces. And at the end of the day, I think NGS has pretty much boiled down to that. A lot of people gear up, they run content, they get strong because they just want to make more money so that they can use the money to buy a lot of fashion pieces. So yeah, I guess the meme is actually true where our fashion is actually the true end game. But let me know in the comment section below, what do you guys think? Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye. What can I say except you're welcome?